dungeon, which is an archer and a wolf. The main things you need to worry about on this boss is the barb traps that the archer will throw, and the endless hail that he will do, which just needs to be kited around. Another thing to also note is the tank needs to make sure that the wolf and the archer are not too close to each other. If so, they will enrage and empower each other and their attacks will hurt twice as much to the point where they will one shot. DPS will need to stay close to the wolf so that way the healer is able to kite the wolf and must stay far back from the group so it will target them. Once it does, you just run around the arena, kiting the doll, making sure not to get too close to the archer. And once that's done, the tank can retaunt the dog and bring it back over. The archer, while that's happening, will summon a totem that will protect them. And you make sure that the DPS kill that, otherwise they take reduced damage. Also, after the dog starts kiting, he will do a new mech, which is fire lines. Just don't stack together, stay in a cross pattern, avoid the lines, you can block through them so long as they're not in rage. And after that it's really just a rinse and repeat, avoid the barb traps, the endless hail, the dog when he get when he uh, targets someone, and the archer when he does his lines. And with that the first boss will be done and dusted. Alrighty, we are on to the second boss of this dungeon which is the giant lurcher and the humanoid companion that he has. The main two mechs that will be present throughout the entire fight is the axe throw. He will at random pick someone, usually the furthest person from the group, and throw an axe or pick it up. It'll, sp it'll be a giant AoE that will uh, spawn on whoever he's targeting. Just roll or dodge roll out of it. It's a giant square, so just make sure to avoid it. And the next other mechanic is Cinder Moths will spawn randomly and target everybody in the group. They can be AoE down, or if they get too close to you, they'll blow up. Just avoid the AoEs and you should be good. The only mechanic that the humanoid would do for the first part of the fight is she will just teleport around the room. She'll shield up and start shooting little fireballs at everybody. That will leave behind a fire dot that will start ramping the longer her shield is up. So if you can't burn the lurcher to 70-65% I suggest just killing her shield to stop her from channeling and she'll just teleport back in the middle. When he hits the 70-65 to 65 threshold she'll teleport back in the middle and die. And it will just be the lurcher boss remaining. He will gain a new mech, which he will start breathing fire in front of him. It's the tank will be the, one of the main people having to deal with this because it will, as he breathes on you, he will leave behind a little AOE under your feet. So just kite it around to avoid having it stack and ramp up in damage. Now with the axe throw, keep in mind that he will also be breathing fire too, so my best bet is to definitely dodge roll or block any axe throws. The cinder moths will still be present. They will blow up barrels, which you can stand in when they, when the uh, the big AoEs they leave behind. As of right now, they do no damage. I'm not sure if it's intentional by his ass, but uh, yet as of right now, you can just stand in them. And just keep avoiding the axe throws. The tank will just keep kiting the little fire dot under their feet. And the boss should be dead. And this one will be done. Alrighty, we're on to the last boss for this dungeon. Now, he's got quite a lot going on about him. A few mechs with mini bosses that you have to defeat. So I'll do my best to explain all the mechs. Now... The main boss himself, he has a few mechs you have to avoid. The main one is the giant AoE that he will summon on him. It will ignite all of the squares around him, so the tank must do his best to keep him in a corner and then kite him on the outside of the arena, so that way the DPS and the healer have enough room to kite when he ignites them. Make sure that when you are ignite and you have to kite the dot around that you're not stacking on top of each other and getting each other killed. 
Another mech he will do is he will summon three crosses in the room. Uh, do your best to rem memorize where the safe squares are. And when they explode, just make sure you're not inside those lines. If you do, you will get one-shotted regardless if you block or roll. So definitely avoid that at all cost. At random, he will ignite the furnace, setting some tiles alight. You'll know those tiles because they will have a faint red and yellow glow to them. Just avoid standing on top of them and you should be fine. They'll disappear after some time, so they're not permanent. Only the orange ones are the permanent tiles that will stay lit for the remainder of the fight. He will also summon random little nixes that the tank will just have to chain in. DPS, so make sure you kill them. At 50%, he will go into the middle of the room and ignite all of the tiles, so you need to get to a room as soon as possible. I recommend doing the middle guy first. He seems to be the most troublesome. His mechs are similar to the warrior. He will do a giant swipe cleave. Make sure you're not in front of him. He will also drop orbs on everybody that will chain um, everyone to an orb. The deep, I recommend the DPS and the healer running and breaking their chain so that way they pop. And the tank doesn't have to do his orb. You can survive one if you block it. So just have the tank keep the mini bosses still and in AoEs. By the time you kill the sword and board guy, he will, the other two will sp uh, most likely run in. You have a 2H guy that does a whole bunch of lot of fire AoEs. He also does a fan attack that can be interrupted. It targets everybody if, when he's channeling, so make sure you bash it. And he also does a giant AoE that similar to the kill cutters in Dread Cellar. Or Dread Cell, sorry. So just avoid, get out of that. And once he is dead, you have a girl that just basically just jumps around and fists everybody but she also does a very deadly um, pizza slice mechanic where there will be a safe square in the pizza slice just make sure you stand on it or just block it or get out of the AOE just keep in mind it's a bit buggy where sometimes even though you're safe you might not be so I just recommend definitely getting out or just blocking it once they're all dead, run back into the room. Your fight with the main boss will continue until he dies. He will do all the same mechanics as he has done before. The lines, the ignite, the giant AoE on the ground, igniting the forge, ads will spawn. So he just keeps on doing that until he's dead. And that is the Oak Swan Pit completed for your group. Thanks for watching.